Hi guys, it is a beautiful day out here. The sun is out, the birds are chirping, and it is not raining. We have had some of the wildest weather the last week. Ever since I planted that little hedge of the cat's pajamas nepeta, we've had nothing but rain. Pockets of rain, days of rain. Every time I go to grab the camera to come out and film a project, the rain would come. And so I'm so happy that the rain is gone and the sun is out. Now the sun did come out yesterday. Yesterday was a beautiful day. The sun was out again. The birds were chirping and every landscaping company on the block came out and it was just so much activity and so much noise i couldn't get anything done on camera which is fine you know that just that just happens sometimes and you just kind of got to roll with it but i was able to help our neighbors dig up some of their lilies and daffodils and stuff because they're having their whole front area re-landscaped, professionally re-landscaped. And so that was a lot of fun because I just, I needed something. I needed to get in the dirt and feel productive for just even a little while. And it was so nice too, because at the end of it, I got a little plant for all my help. Look, come check it out. I'm so excited, like free plants, <laughs> yeah. So look at this. I was gifted this little this little bunch of hostas and they're so cute. We're going to take them over here because this is going to be part of our project for today. Today I'm going to be planting a container for our front porch which is going to be part sun and part shade perennials and annuals. And I'm really excited about this because if you've been watching any of our videos, you know that this this whole garden is fairly new all over again so we don't have a lot of big trees or shade areas here we have little bits here and there but not enough to do like an actual shade garden yet which i'm kind of getting into walking through the nursery and seeing the shade gardens with all of the hostas and hookahs and all of these just lush vibrant greens and yellows it makes me really want to up the shade in this yard a little bit but i'm just really excited because we're going to be doing some shade stuff today i do feel i should warn you guys the patio area that we're going to be working in today is a bit of a mess yesterday i needed to feel a little productive so i pulled everything away from the house the lawn mowers chicken wire nursery containers you name it anything that was against the house i pulled it away scraped up all of those leaves and helicopters that had fallen and everything just kind of stayed wet and muddy rinsed it all off and thought i'm just going to let everything dry out and then i'll put everything back together in the morning well last night we got woken up with a torrential thunderstorm so Everything is all wet and the sun is out now and it's gonna dry, but right now everything is in total disarray. You can see we've got a couple of pressure washers under cover over here. This is the table of peppers and onions that I'm hardening off. And then over here is just a mishmash of everything. We've got chicken wire, nursery containers. We've got, I found some more flats of the cat's pajamas nepeta. So this whole back area is turning into another landing pad. We got more containers over here. The lawn mower is just sitting over here in the middle of the walkway. And we've got tea posts and drain pipes sitting on top of the raised beds. And all that stuff came from this little area here and this little corner on the side of our house. And it's crazy to think that that little area held all of this stuff. But the sun is out and everything's gonna dry and when you've got beautiful things to plant, who cares? I've got my little workstation slash laboratory all set up and this is all of the plants that we have to pick from today. I went to the nursery the other day and just walked through the shade garden with a basket and just randomly just started picking things out that I liked. I kind of went a little monochromatic with just a little spot of color but I kind of wanted to keep it all just greens and yellows I got an impatience here that's white so nothing too too crazy I had a pulmonaria here too this is just beautiful I love it this is the spot on pulmonaria from proven winners and it's got some buds on it too and they bloom pink and white oh here's some right there Let's see if I can show you these are a little spent but you can see the color on them but everything is just so lush and pretty. I love it. 
and we've got a 17 inch terracotta container over here i don't think it's going to fit everything but we're going to pack it full these are the hostas that my neighbor gave me and look how bright they are i might i might separate these or divide them and throw a little patch like right in here somewhere i don't know but it just looks so good i have to put it in a good thing about this container too is that we can repurpose a lot of the perennials so once we have this all planted and it's spent some time on the front porch probably i'm going to try and keep it there all season until the fall then i can disassemble it and take all the perennials and replant them around the garden bed so you kind of get two uses out of it which i think is great and a lot of these perennials do get quite large in the landscape but because we're planting them in pots they're going to stay a little bit more size controlled until we take them back out and get them in the landscape so let's start with the hosta because this is just beautiful this is a seducer hosta from proven winners and i just love the leaves on this we've got like a dark green ribbed center and the outside is a chartreuse limey green so it looks kind of variegated but i just love like the multi-dimensional color that the leaves give and it's just beautiful and this gets quite large in the landscape this actually gets like 28 to 36 inches tall and 36 inches wide so it is quite quite the beast in the landscape <laughs> Tucked under our hosta, we've got a cherry truffles hookera, and this is going to give us a nice splash of red color. And this stays fairly small, 8 to 10 inches tall and about 26 inches wide. I don't think it's going to get this wide in the container, but it will definitely fill in one side of our container and just give it a nice, nice bit of red color. It is a part shade loving plant too, so I think it's going to do fine out in the front porch because it does get hit a couple hours of afternoon sun but it is kind of dappled a little so I'll just keep an eye on it and then right next to that we've got the spot on pulmonaria and this is just such a beautiful plant it's got these fuzzy leaves that are speckled with green and white and then it's got these little tiny delicate flowers that bloom pink and white let me see if I can get a picture look at that I don't know if you can see that I think I've got some oh here we go Here's one of the little flowers. Let me get it in the sun. The lighting is a little tricky right now. But look at that. Isn't that just so beautiful? And I think that against the hookara is just gonna be so pretty. And the hookara is in bloom actually. You can see how it's got its bloom stalks over here and they shoot out these nice creamy white and pink blooms i think those two are just going to be so pretty so the pulmonaria likes a part shade location and it stays on the fairly small side too 14 to 16 inches tall and 18 inches wide so this is just going to be beautiful because i'm going to put it right next to i think the the hookara and i think those two together are just going to be beautiful i do have another hookara that i picked up as well this one is a palace purple coral bells and this one has a quite a bit of a darker green with just a tinge of reddish maroon color i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm going to use this one or not but i do like to have options and i think this one just looks just i love the leaves on it but i'm not sure about the color if i want to add this to it and then i just have an assortment of trailing annuals that we can add in here too we've got the proven accents wojo gem vinca which is a variegated vinca vine and this is going to be just a beautiful beautiful thing to tuck in right in the front and just let it kind of trail and i think this with the hosta leaves is just going to be so pretty We've got a Dichondra Silver Falls. This is gonna be another trailing accent. And this is gonna be providing our blue color because this has got a silvery blue tinge to it. And this is just gonna be so beautiful up against the Creeping Jenny, which is just the beautiful chartreuse, beautiful, beautiful plant. I love this. And I've actually had this in full sun and in part shade, and it does actually better in part shade, part sun, because 
the full sun is just way too strong for this. I also picked up this flamethrower salsa verde coleus, which I think is beautiful. Not only is it just so bright, but the color on this, it's almost like it glows, especially like in the sun. Look at that. And it does have some variegation because the center, the center of the leaves are a little bit darker than the edges. So you kind of get like a, an overall theme going on here. We've got a lot of like green and yellow. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on with, of course, a little bit of splash here. I've got a little white impatient over here. It's got one little flower bloom on it. I think this is going to be beautiful right up against the blooms from the hookara. And then I've got a little bit of moss. This is Irish moss. <laughs> this just provides a nice, a nice bright green and a cooling element to this whole thing. And that's pretty much what I kind of wanted to do. I wanted more of a monochromatic type of a look, obviously with a little bit of color, but we pretty much have all of the color groups represented here. We've got our green, our yellow, our red, and our blue. So I think this is just gonna be beautiful. All right, let's get started and see what we end up with. We're gonna start by filling up our container with soil. Oops. Whoops. I forgot biotone. Hold on. A little starter fertilizer. <laughs> Mix it in. Let the dust kind of settle a little. Okay, we are ready to go. Now, because this is gonna be backed into a corner on the front porch, I'm not going to center the hosta. The hosta is gonna be like my centerpiece, but I'm not gonna put it right in the center. I'm gonna put it more towards the back because we're not gonna see the back of this container here. We're just gonna see from here forward. So I'm just going to dig a little hole. Look at this. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, and check out the roots. This is from the storm last night. I don't think we're going to need to water this in <laughs> too much. All right, let's see if I can get this out. Ooh. Look at that. Just going to tease these up a little bit. Going to just separate them a little. Don't want to rough them up too much. They will find their way. Okay. I need to find the front of the plant. This is the front. This is the back. You can kind of see the shape of it too. It's a little bit flatter on this side. So we're just going to use this as the back. Tuck it nice and snug in here. Let me check. I'm just going to backfill it in. I'm so excited too for shade because, you know, I've picked up a few trees behind me too because I do want to put some trees in our yard that provide a little bit of shade, like over here kind of towards like the arborvitae hedge where the arborvitae hedge is, um, just because we have so much sun. And I just, I 
like I said, I want to get into some shade gardening too. And the, the south and the west side over here where the vegetable garden is, that I'm not going to mess with because, you know, if I'm growing vegetables, I need sun. But over on this side, I thought it would be nice to kind of have some shade and some shade trees and we can plant more of these. <laughs> okay. Now I think we're going to go in with the hookara. Well, would help to dig the hole first. <laughs> Let's move these. Getting reorganized here. And I'm making a mess. Oh, wow. Oof. These roots are sopping wet. And I'm just gonna tuck this right in a little bit on an angle, but not too much. Oh, there goes the soil. <laughs> and I am packing the soil all around the root ball too. And pressing it in firmly so we don't have any air pockets, but I'm not smashing everything in. At least not yet. <laughs> Take another look. That looks good. Now let's come in over here on this side with the pulmonaria. And let's try to keep the soil in the pot, Lexus. And in case you guys are wondering, when I am digging the hole, I am leaving about an inch or two of soil along the edge over here too. I'm not scraping it completely away. So you can see my hole over here, and I've got a nice little barrier here. So the entire root ball has soil. <laughs> that looks so good. Now I'm just going to come in with all of our smaller accent pieces and just dot them around all over the place. I think this finca vine will look really good right against the red. And I think I'm going to tuck a creeping jenny in right along the side back here. I'm going to take some of the hostas that I was given yesterday and I'm going to just separate a few. just so I can have a little accent plant, which I think I'm gonna put right in the center. Ooh, that's gonna look good. Our little touch of blue, Dichondra Silver Falls. And that'll trail along the edge over here. And I think the moss right in front. All right, guys, let me get my area all cleaned up, watered in. We'll get the container placed, and then I'll show you the final product. I decided to move it to the front porch before I watered it in, so it's not five times as heavy. I'm going to use these little rubber feet for the bottom of the pot. That way it's not sitting directly on the concrete and the drainage hole has about half inch of room so it'll drain. I'm just going to line them up in some fashion and then we'll try it out. That's pretty sturdy. All right, you guys, here it is. Isn't it just beautiful? And I love the way that it's just moving and flowing in the wind. Oh, it just looks so pretty. All these colors just blended together. So, so excited to see this 
all, well not fill in because it is pretty filled in but just to kind of see them all grow and merge together a little more so let's recap everything that I used in here because I didn't use every single plant that I showed you guys but I did start off with the seducer hosta as my centerpiece and again this will get big in the landscape they get 26 inches tall actually up to 40 inches when they actually send up their bloom stalks and 36 inches wide so this is quite a big plant and they are hardy down to zone three so these are zone three through nine oh, look at that color you guys absolutely in love with it and then over here, tucked underneath one of the hosta leaves, we've got the cherry truffles hookera, which just looks so, so cute. Just kind of peeking out from underneath the hosta leaf. We've got the bloom stalk coming up over here. And this stays fairly short, 8 to 10 inches tall, but it does get wide, 26 inches wide. They are hardy in zones 4 through 9, so they're a pretty tough perennial. And one, again, once we're done with... Most of these, we'll pop them out and put them in the landscape. Look how they just blow in the wind. Oh, I love that movement. And then over on this side, tucked in, we've got the spot on pulmonaria, which I just, I love it for its foliage. And it actually kind of feels, it's not smooth and shiny. It kind of feels a little like a lamb's ear. And that coloring is just beautiful. Got a little flower bud peeking up over here these get 14 to 16 inches tall 16 to 18 inches wide these are hardy in zones three through nine so again another tough shade loving perennial and then right over here in front we've got the dichondra silver falls i tucked in some irish moss hidden behind this we've got a little bit of the fern like host not the fern like hostas but these crinkly miniature hostas that my neighbor gave me which add another little pop of color and they kind of draw off of the seducer hosta we've got our variegated vinca over here and then on each side i tucked in some creeping jenny on both sides you can kind of see it over there and all in all i'm just I'm in love with this. I love it. I love the color. It's all just so lush. I, you know, I keep saying lush, but that's, that's just the first word that comes to mind. Here's what it looks like on our front porch. It is protected underneath the awning, but it will get a few hours of sunlight that come beaming through over here. And I think that'll be just enough to give everything the amount of sunlight that it needs without hopefully scorching anything. I can see it behind me just blowing in the wind and I absolutely love it. I really, really want to up my shade game a little bit more, one step at a time. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.